The Lord be with you. Though it was celebrated in most churches yesterday, Reformation Day, the official date, October 31st, is today. So we commemorate that, that in 1517, a 32-year-old monk named Martin Luther asked for a discussion about church practices of the time that he felt departed from Scripture, and so the debate that ensued changed the structure of the church forever. Luther wasn't looking to split away from the church, but to reform it, thus Reformation Day. Though the Christian church now has a number of denominations, Reformation Day is not only for Lutherans to celebrate. In fact, today marks a call to go back to the Bible, to look to Scripture alone as the basis for what we believe. So it's not a day to flaunt German heritage or for Lutherans to feel superior. And that's not even really funny. It's, it's a day for humility that Luther realized as we do by the grace of God only, by faith alone, by Christ alone, by Scripture alone, has God had mercy on us sinners. And by his grace, we have forgiveness in Jesus Christ. And so that's why we celebrate today. So we come with thankful hearts, with humble hearts, that we can worship God who loved us, who still loves us. We'll stand for the invocation and the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's word, the gospel reading for Reformation Day from John chapter 8. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word... You are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you come and say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, Harry Houdini is connected with Halloween in some ways. Partly he died on Halloween and there kind of that convergence, but he had made a practice of being able to escape from things. And in his later life, he became very interested in whether it was possible to connect with those who had died already, and he exposed actually quite a few fakes who said that they could do seances and things like that. And so his name often comes up around Halloween, but there's a, a story, one of my favorites of, about him, that I think connects in a different way with the text. It is that he prided himself on being able to get out of, it, out of any jail cell that anyone could devise, any lock he could, he could unlock. And so there was a, a little town in England that was very proud of their new jail, and they invited Houdini to come and see if he could do his best. And so he was put in the jail cell, and the door clanked shut. And he was left alone. After 15 minutes, he hadn't gotten anywhere. So he took off his jacket, started to work a little harder. After 15 more minutes, he hadn't gotten anywhere. And he really began to sweat. And after 30 more minutes, when the time was to be up for him to get out of the jail cell, in exasperation, he just banged his head on the door and the door swung open. It had never been locked. That's why he couldn't unlock it, because it wasn't locked in the first place. I think that's an interesting image and analogy, metaphor, for this text and for our situation as we stand before God. It talks about truth and freedom. If you abide in my word, Jesus says, you're truly my disciples, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. People who heard this felt superior because of their status. They were Jews. They were Abraham's descendants. The promise was made to Abraham, and who was anyone to tell them anything about themselves? They knew how they stood before God, or at least they thought they did. 
And Jesus reminded them that anyone who falls into the category of sinner is enslaved. And you know best what those bars are that hold you into sin. Those sins of thought, word, and deed that are particular most to you, that others may not know as you walk freely around every day, but still you're enslaved to sin. So the Jews thought they were someone. Sometimes the Lutherans think they're someone on Reformation Day. Maybe even the Concordians think they're someone. Because we're all here doing God's work, aren't we? That ought to give us some credit from God. And Jesus pointed out, as Luther would have reminded us, if you go read the Bible, you realize that you don't have any status before God. You have to acknowledge, as we often try to do, that you're a poor, miserable sinner, deserving of any horrible thing that would happen in life, and then to go to hell when it's all over. That's what our sins enslave us into, that kind of life. And that's the truth. If that were the only truth, we'd have a sad life. But the whole truth is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the truth about ourselves is to lead us only to the truth about God, to the truth of what he has done, that he's freed us. Because there's another sense where we can say, Maybe we are just stuck in sin, and that's the best we can hope for. So when there's past sins and guilt, which Luther felt ever looming around him, how much trouble can you get into when you're a monk? And yet for hours a day, he was plagued by sin. When our faith feels like something that we have to do, when we're trying to earn God's favor by doing things, It's just a life of half-truths. We don't know the whole truth. But the whole truth is what Jesus has done. Greater than any Houdini, Jesus freed not just himself, but all of us from the hold that sin and death has on us. And he didn't try to escape death, which is what we might think of, He went right through the middle of it and came out victorious on the other side. It's so simple and straightforward, isn't it, the gospel? But it's so hard to embrace that. Because sometimes we don't accept the truth about ourselves and we think we can do it on our own. And if we think we can do it on our own, then there's no place for Jesus. So, when we come to trust in the gospel and the faith, Jesus saying, it is finished, we're free, we're free to go. Free to go and live that out. Sometimes we stay trapped in our little worlds and in our sinful patterns because we don't truly trust that. That's what Jesus was saying. If you abide in my word, if you continue in my word, if you hold to my teaching are other ways that it's translated. Because God knows we need to be reminded again and again and again. It's too easy to forget. So it's a message not just for once a year on Reformation Day. In fact, it's the gospel so obvious to us that we may not even see the forest for the trees. We may not realize that the door swung open for us to go through and live. And so once again, in just a few minutes, you get to go out and live again, free in Christ. In Jesus' name.
Amen.